Uck dot 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 my brain is fluttering synaptic biochemical releases of epinephrine just to keep me awake for this dot 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 time travel is possible, Einstein was correct in his perspective theory of time being a fourth dimensional object, no one showed up to Hawking's party probably because the ones that can travel are not manipulated so easily. Knowing that the outcome of showing up to such a staged event would leave them, their technology, and anything else that not just hawking but government agencies, corrupt corporate executives and political regimes would find of any sort of value to acquire for their own ambitions and I doubt they would allow them to leave until they did. If they got even a blood sample of someone from the future then that person would have eyes on their every move from childbirth until the point they traveled back into time. No traveling back in time would not change the future because the future is already set. If someone traveled back into time then their actions would only be a part of the supporting events that led up to this moment. If a man travels back and kills his own grandfather then what will more than likely occur is that he will become the robber who tried to break into grandpa's house when he was younger and got shot by grandpa. He cannot go back and impregnate his grandmother unless he was really grandpa all along and that was one of grandpa's secrets he never shared even to grandma all those years. The most you can hope for is to change the course of the present by finding a solution for current problems in the past and leaving a note for someone to find after you've left or even before which could lead you to the point you're standing at right now and no traveling into the future then into the past to try and change something would not work either because of what I referred to in the prior explanation, you'd only become a cause to the events that have already unfolded. Even if it is only myths that people talk about when some stranger walked into town one day crazy as a mad hatter about being from the future now to Einstein's theory, yes time is a fourth dimensional field take the principal theory of black holes and what happens to any and all matter that falls below the event horizon. It is crushed compacted and spaghettified into a single finite beam of light the entire history of the universe is said to be found in this beam and this is why, in theory, now time, from its beginning to end is just like that beam of light within the black hole. Every second of every moment can be broken down into particles of light much similar to that of DNA but on a fiber optical frequency. The FRBs that we have detected are particle beams of fiber optic imprints of time that have slowed down in their inertia to the point where they can no longer remain in this Higgs boson type particle field in which all of time, every moment from beginning to end has been imprinted and compressed into these fiber optical beams of light that resonate either in synchronicity or in a balanced contrast, I haven't calculated which yet, with the spectrum range of light being that from ultraviolet to X-ray. This resonance maintains their flow together in a fourth dimensional field each with their own specific and exact fiber optic frequency that can be tuned and a specific time period can be locked onto by tuning into its exact frequency resonance. From a third dimensional perspective and understanding we would perceive this field as a jumbled high pitch squelch that comes out of your typical ham radio or the series of white and black static that comes on the TV screen when trying to find a station. There are five fields that make up the fabrics of the universe. The photon field which is the raw field of energy basically it is the positively charged particles that have not fused to become particle material yet, hydrogen helium all that before they fuse to become other particles. You have the Higgs boson cosmic microwave background which is the fusing ground of particles as they become solid matter and is the source inertia of the origin of particle mass in the universe. When matter first formed in the universe it began here on this level of material structure. This is where particles pooled and first fused and then violently multiplied. Then you have the ether field this field is the junkyard of particle mass after its material that fused and formed its physical properties are spent. 
As the physical object of matter begins to dissipate due to the loss of proton energy that kept the particles fused together, it begins to decay as far as particle matter is concerned but the core particles that made its structure still are intact and without form to hold its physical structure the particles return to a state of field but because of their fused composition as solid matter they do not resonate with the photon field particles and thus exist in a similar field as the photon particles but separate because of the alteration to their energy resonance that field is the ether field. Eventually the particles recover their resonance pattern and return to the photon field and begin this cycle all over again. Time began within the microseconds of these fields first existence. When particles fused and energy began to form a positive charge just before the violent multiplication which lead to the big bang is when time began to travel beyond that point then your point of dimensional perspective must be based on something other than photon energy particles, such as dark matter for example. To see beyond the formation of the universe you must look for the material that was present before the formation of photon energy particles. But that is fifth dimensional field perspectives. Don't want to put you too far ahead of your own thinking. Ok so fourth dimensional observation would be that of the mapping of the stellar cosmic background using a tesseract cube to encompass the position of the stellar objects. The galactic central point is the area in which all the superclusters that every galaxy that exists rotates inevitably around or in a set pattern within. All these superclusters have a central point of convergence that they themselves are all connected to. That convergence point is the only fixated point that never changes position. Everything else is always in perpetual motion so to begin a mapping process of coordinates we begin the label parsec quadrant aka 01.100. The AA label utilizes graphical reference position but the preceding references spiral out from the center. The label 001 is a combination of Dewey decibel and latitude and longitude grid reference because the two sectioned numbers represent a 3D grid reference or quadrant. These three positions on a star chart are the parameter of space and the section within the galactic nebula the position is located thus in mathematical terms of geometry it is a tesseract shaped mapping system. That's the fourth dimensional field the fifth dimensional field is applying the star chart using the five fields of particle matter expanding the tesseract from a fourth dimensional perspective with a larger universal fifth dimensional perspective that includes the temporal resonance frequency of time from beginning to end and all objects contained therein using the Higgs boson field as the object's point of origin leading to solid matter formation in the photon particle field its traced path of stellar movement and position in the universe and then its regression of particle decay as it phases into the ether field. Measured precisely by the temporal resonance sequence that contains the exact point in time that object will be in its course of movement you can plot out a simulation program that can pinpoint stellar events with precision. This tool is necessary when planning on traveling both interstellar distances and speeds so you know what course to chart so that you don't run into anything while traveling at light speed and atomize yourself by crashing into someone's moon.